Just to 
at the right hand side of his father, he's conquered hell, grave, and yeah. death. Amen. Yeah. Good to have every one of you welcome. We're going to open in a word of prayer for those that are watching online. Jazz, Kane, uh, Veronica Dobbins, and his family. I don't want to leave anybody out. Megan. Ryan. From uh, Atlanta and Ryan, we want to say thank you guys and for Barry and Pomai and all the rest of you. If I left you out, I didn't mean to. I'll, I'll try to mention you later, but welcome. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday for those that are watching online. We love you and thank you for joining us this morning. So we're going to, uh, can we have everyone stand up for a moment and we're opening a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you this morning. What a glorious morning, oh God. Father, that we can celebrate your resurrection, oh God. Father, we thank you so much that you are alive, oh God. You're not dead, oh God. You're a God that is alive and well. Seated at the right hand side of your Father. Holy Spirit, we say welcome this morning, oh God. Welcome, oh God. I thank you so much. You take preeminence in our midst of resurrection Sunday morning. As we celebrate you. Oh God, yeah. be glorified yeah. in our lives, in our church, oh God. Be glorified through our worship this morning, oh God. Yes, Father, we come with such joyful hearts this morning to know that you have conquered hell, death, and the grave, oh God. That you are a victorious God. No other God could have done what you have done, oh God. You lay down your life for those you love, oh God. Your children, oh God. Thank you that we can call you. Ever Father, we can call you friend, oh God, Redeemer, oh God, Savior, oh God, strong power, a very present help in trouble, oh God. Man may fail, but you never fail, Father God. We thank you so much for your presence here already, and we say, God, you are welcome. Do as you want to, move as you want to, touch life this morning, God, transform life this morning, Jesus, oh God, renew minds this morning, oh God, and above all, Oh God, we declare souls will be saved for the extension of your kingdom this morning. In the name of Jesus and the saints of God, said, Amen. Amen. We're going to get into a time of worship. Give attention to the screen this morning.
we know that he is a God of miracles and we are putting our faith in him through, through our tithing and um, something that, you know, since we've been married, we've never really talked about like buying a house and now we, we can see it, you know, that we buy a house and be blessed by that and and just in different areas of our lives, knowing that, you know, we don't have to live paycheck by paycheck anymore. That we have more than enough because of our freedom. Awesome, awesome. And um, yeah. we are definitely grateful for that. You know, um, we are both beyond blessed being here at the church at Santa Monica um, to just um, serve and not expect anything back. And when we don't expect this, that's when God shows up, and um, we are truly blessed. Amen. Thank you for staying at home. And um, because we are going patient to patient, we really have another source of income. So we believe God that I'm going to you know, go back to work and find a job that was going to meet our needs because with having a paycheck, we, we were able to you know, get whatever we needed, but just to have more and to have something that we can depend on. Um, we went and looked for another job for myself, and I, I knew what I wanted. I knew that I I was able to get a good job, so um, as soon as I went for that job, the pay started at one salary, but I knew I had already worked for the company, so I wanted more than that. Come on. So right. through the interview process, I had to be going crazy for me each step of the way. Woo. And um, when I got the um, offer, they were offering me more than the minimum. Oh, man. And so that was such a blessing because just to know that we weren't getting a minimum, but something more than that, and a blessing beyond this. We'd already been tithing and giving, and we gave a sacrificial offering even before that, you know, to show God that we were really trusting in Him. And um, the Bible says that God is able to do exceedingly and more. Yeah. And He is able. That's what we have to really stand on and know that God is the one who's able to do it. It's not through my good looking resume or through our offering, but God being our Amen. Can you stand up here and ready? Can you come forward and stand up and let everyone see you? This is an awesome couple. Let's give them praise. 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 We got our, our offerings ready this morning to give into the house of God. We're going to pray over it in Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you this morning for each and every faithful giver that's giving into the house of God. Father, as we heard the testimony this morning, we know that God, you are able to do exceedingly abundantly. Beyond all we can think, ask, or imagine according to your word in Ephesians 3.20, God. Your blessings will overtake us, oh God. Father, we thank you for every tither, every giver, generous giver, Father. Bless them super abundantly. They job the God in their homes, in their families, in their businesses. We call them blessed, oh God, in Jesus' name. And the saints of God said, Amen. 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 Amen.
church, we want you to believe in God, but we also want you to know that God is the same. We are not against people who don't attend church anywhere. Instead, we pursue them with love, the very same love that's pursuing us. At our church, we're learning to serve God with all our hearts, and we're learning to worship Him with all our lives. And if you're looking for the perfect church, we're not it. At our church, we will make mistakes, but we will choose to grow from them. At our church, we're part of a global community that's knit together by the resurrection of Jesus. And by the way, at our church, we believe that really happened too. At our church, we will engage with people who are in real need because we are the hands and the feet of Christ. And finally, we need you to hear this loud and clear. At our church, it's not really our church at all. It's His. And we live and move and breathe in His church for His glory and His fame, not ours. So here's the invitation. You're invited to jump in with your whole heart at your own pace and to experience the life that awaits you in Christ. Friends, this is going to be good. Welcome to our church. Oh, man. Woohoo! Amen. We serve a miracle working God and I'm so great this morning to pastor this great church, the church of Santa Monica. We love you all dearly. Jesus loves you. Amen. Jesus is King. Jesus is Lord. He is our risen Savior this morning. He is our Messiah. He is the Lord of Lords, the great I am, and is also our soon coming King. Amen. Amen. Welcome Mickey and a dear husband Derek. God bless you guys as you fellowship with us. I think you guys have driven like two hours to get here this morning. Yeah. Two hours to get to a church service. Isn't that amazing? Amen. Wow. Welcome Dr. Davis. Always a pleasure and a joy to have you come fellowship with us. And you know always, uh, is Steve here? Yeah. I told you Steve, Steve travels the furthest all the way from Beverly Hills. Yeah. And he got to get up early and get that car going and get his coffee going. <laughs> Welcome, Ken. God bless you. Welcome to all our online viewers, Jazz and Kane, Naomi, Bert, Kaleo, Meg, Ryan, and uh, their children, Genesis and Stephen. Also, Barry and Pomai. God bless you guys. Anybody else I'm missing out this morning before we get some uh, tomatoes thrown at us? <laughs> Everyone else that's watching online, God bless you. I trust as you fellowship with us this morning, you will be blessed. Well, it's my privilege, my joy and honor this morning to introduce to you a little girl, precious in the sight of God, and she's going to be doing the Bible reading for us this morning. We want to welcome Amelia. Amelia, <laughs> Amelia. Amelia. And, uh, you know, the Bible says, train up a child in the ways of the Lord. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. Amen? Amen. And what better place than the house of God That's right. to raise up these vessels of honors? You know, we have, uh, I think, mistakenly said uh, previously that this is the future generation. No, they're not. 
They are the now generation. Right. We're raising them up now, right now to make a difference in the community, in the society that you and I live in. And you know, when people are going to look and watch these firebrands being raised up in the house of God, they too are going to be totally amazed at what God That's is right. doing. Amen. Amen. So we want to welcome as well Emilia's great grandma that is watching all the way from the valley this morning. God bless you. And I know you're going to be honored. Over to Emilia. Come, sweetheart. Now, on the first day, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Come on. Peter, therefore, went out and the other disciples and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the and the other disciples outran Peter and came to the tomb first. So they both, oh, sorry. Go ahead. And he stooped down and looked in, saw the linen cloth lying there, yet did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen cloth lying there, and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloth, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he also and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know that the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own home. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked in the tomb, and she saw two angels with white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, mm -hmm. where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Mm -hmm. She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary! She turned to him and said, Rabbi! Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. Amen. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Amen. 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 Good job. Thank you so much for that awesome reading. Well, we have a video to show you right now, if you would just turn your attention to the screen. <laughs>
up and this morning I'm here to share with you from the word of the Lord. And you know, truly when we look at the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, many questions <laughs> run through our mind and races through our hearts. And you know, sometimes we cannot comprehend or we cannot contain what Jesus had been through. And you know, this morning, I just want to share with you very briefly on the crucifixion before I move over to the resurrection. But you know, the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis chapter 3, ever since Adam and Eve had sinned, God said, I am going to have a seed come one day. And that seed was Jesus Christ. And we see very, from the very beginning of time, ever since man had fallen, man had been separated from God. And the only one that could make atonement for man to be reconciled with God was God himself. And therefore we see God had clothed himself in a flesh suit and had come to live upon the face of the earth like you and I have lived. And he dressed himself with this flesh garment. The Bible tells us in the book of Colossians that in him dwelt the Godhead bodily. So the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit manifested himself as Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Came and lived on the earth for almost 33 years. And in that time revolutionized the entire world whereby he came and he split time into two time zones. A.D. and B.C. Or B.C. and A.D. And you see, beloved, as we continue to look at the resurrection of Jesus Christ, first we got to understand the death of Jesus Christ. The Bible says through one man sin entered the world, and through one man redemption had come. Sin entered through one man, the first Adam. Sin and death after righteousness came, atonement came, justification came, righteousness came, glorification came, just through the one man, Jesus Christ, who became the second Adam. And you see, beloved, why did Jesus come? He came to deliver us. He came to deliver you. He came to deliver me. So, what in the world causes us to be embarrassed about our faith? What in the world causes us to deny the resurrection power of Jesus Christ? What in the world causes us to deny the power that was displayed on the cross of Calvary. And you know, even the Roman centurion went on to say, Truly, this is a great man. Mm. Pilate himself said, I find no fault in you. Mm. And you know, in spite of the world that cheered Christ on for the week that before his crucifixion, Hosanna to the king in the highest, the same crowd cried out, crucify him, crucify him. And you see, beloved, as we look at Jesus' death on that cross, you and I know for sure that Jesus defeated death, he defeated hell, and he defeated the grave. Amen. Only Jesus had done that. Amen. And you Amen. see, as we look back at history, it wasn't Muhammad. It wasn't Krishna. It wasn't any other gods like Buddha, whoever that promised you eternal life. But Jesus Christ was the only one that promised you this eternal life. Even the thief on the cross dying with Jesus. He went on to say, Lord, remember me in yeah. paradise. Yeah. And he said, yeah. this yeah. day you will be with me in paradise. Isn't that amazing? And you know, when we look at the story of resurrection, we realize that the cross could not hold Jesus. The grave could not keep him because Jesus is alive. Amen. 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 That is a God that we serve. You know, one might ask, can somebody please bring that camera lower? One might ask, you know, why did Jesus die on the cross? What was the reason for Jesus to die on the cross? And you know, I want to share with you three reasons today. You know, we all know that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary for your sin and for my sin. The Bible tells us, John 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only 
begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. What an awesome God. Lord. But you know, we don't want to quote that scripture without John 3.17. Jesus himself said that he did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Only Jesus made that declaration. Amen. Amen. Only Jesus laid down his life. You see, religion will tell you, you got to do this. You got to do that. You should not do this. You should not do that. But Jesus went on to say, I did not come to condemn you. I came to love you unconditionally. You know, the second reason, why did Jesus come? The Bible tells us, according to 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 to 19, that Jesus had come to also preach to Noah's generation. When people decide, how is it for three days and three nights, what happened to Jesus? Where was Jesus? He wasn't in the tomb, beloved. The Spirit of Christ had gone right into the depths of hell to bring back the keys. The keys speak of the authority that you and I had lost. The keys speak of the dominion that God had given you and I. Jesus went back right into hell took it out of Satan's hand, and the Word of God tells us that he preached to Noah's generation. The generation that was totally destroyed by the flood. How would they get saved when there was no salvation? How would they have got saved without the shedding of Jesus' blood? And therefore the Word of God tells us that's the reason he died on the cross. That's the reason he went to hell. And you see, as Jesus brought back that authority, He gave it to you and I. Therefore, we can walk on the face of the earth with a bold authority, a greater measure of the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us, that dwells on the inside of us. No longer are we carnally minded. No longer are we driven away by the lust of our flesh, the lust of our eyes, or the pride of life. But we live totally for the one who gave himself for us. Amen. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The third reason Jesus died on that cross. You and I look at that Roman centurion. The last thing that he did was thrust the sword right into the side of Jesus. Let me tell you this. He didn't do it to see that Jesus was dead or they killed Jesus. Nobody could kill Jesus. Not the Romans, not the Jews, not you or not I. That's right. mm. Jesus himself said, I myself will lay down my life down. and I myself will raise it up again. Amen. That is the Amen. God. And Amen. that's why we say that he is the beginning and the end. He is the author of life yes. and he is the finisher of life. Yes. What he started, he finishes. Yes. And you see, beloved, right. as the Roman soldier thrust that side onto him, you know, we wonder what is the prophetic action or why did this have to take place? The answer is simple. Notice when Adam and Eve had sinned in the Garden of Eden, what did God order? He ordered a cherubim to stand with a flaming sword guarding the tree of life. Mm. Notice when the tree of knowledge had been violated, God said, man has become like one of us. Mm. And he said, unless he partakes of the tree of life, he too will become immortal and he would have no need for a God. We all need God in our lives. Amen. And you Amen. see, he placed the sword and the Bible tells us that this angel guard the tree of life for 365 days for you and I and a, a leap year but for God there is no time and no distance in the realm of the spirit that angel guarded the tree of life until God had come personally to take that sword upon himself and therefore the sword was thrust on his side so if the sword had not been removed from the garden, how would you and I have eternal life? That's right. By removing the sword from the garden of Eden, you and I now have free rule, reign, and access to 
eternal life. That is the God that we serve. That is the Christ that you and I serve. And you see, beloved, as we look at what Jesus had done, I'm here to tell you this morning, the life that Jesus lived qualified him for the death that he died. The death that Jesus died qualified you and I for the life that we live. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Amen. He gave up his life so that you and I could have resurrection life. You know, moving on to the second part of my message, the resurrection meets every need of life. The resurrection power of Jesus Christ meets every need of life. You know, like Amelia read this morning, Mary cried out, Tell me where you have placed my Lord. Tell me where you have put him, that I may go and fetch him. And you know, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, as they were walking and they were so grieved, they began speaking to each other. And Jesus suddenly appears to them. And Jesus speaks to them and he says, Why are you grieving? Who is it that you're speaking about? And they go on to say, Haven't you heard about Jesus? that came to Jerusalem, that was crucified, that died and was buried. They never understood the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. The resurrection power of Jesus Christ was for you and I, beloved, to prove to you and I that we have a King, we have a Messiah that has died for you and I. You know, right now throughout the Islamic world, when the Prophet Muhammad had died, they classified him as a super prophet. And they buried his body right now in Medina. And right next to the grave in Medina, you can go over there and you will see an open grave. Ask any Muslim, why is that grave open? Why is that grave there? And they will tell you that is for Jesus when he comes back. How many of you know wow. that when he comes back, he's not coming back as a baby, but he's coming back as a king and as a judge. Yes. And you see, beloved, deception has crept into the church. Deception has crept into the world that keeps people out of knowing the one true and living God. But God has graced you and I. God has caused us to see this Jesus in his resurrected life meeting with people on the earth. At one time he met with one. At another occasion he met with two. On another occasion he met with twelve. On another occasion he met with 120. And on the last occasion there were something like 600 people and he shows up. But can you imagine the same resurrected Jesus as he meets with the disciples. Thomas says, I will not believe until I thrust my hands where the nails have pierced him and thrust my hands through his side where the sword had pierced him and Jesus looks at Thomas and he says go ahead Thomas do it and yes. Thomas cries out my Lord and my God and Jesus looks at Thomas and he says Thomas because you have seen you believe Mm -hmm. But blessed are those who have not seen but still believe. Jesus. Do you know that you are blessed already? Amen. Because yeah. Jesus said that you are blessed because you have not seen him but you still believe. Amen. That Amen. resurrection Amen. power was for you and I to Amen. identify Amen. with. Why? Amen. It is your deliverance from the past. Your old sinful man has been put to death. Amen. Through the power of Jesus Christ's resurrection. You know the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 15 that if Christ had not raised from the dead that our preaching and our belief would be in vain. Mm -hmm. And you know if you read Matthew chapter 28 that when Jesus had come out of the tomb the gods themselves were so afraid that they went on to say, what do we tell our leaders? Or what do we tell the authorities that have placed wow. us here? That is no longer in the tomb. And you know, the Bible tells us that the authorities bribed the gods. And they went on to tell the gods, listen, if anybody asks you, tell them that his disciples had stolen him. Wow. And they paid them a large 
sum of money. Now let me tell you this. If you can lie about money, you can lie about anything. And you know, money had bribed the people. Money had bribed the gods. Money was given in exchange for Jesus' life. And you know, is it strange that Jesus said no man can serve two masters? Either he'll hate the one and love the other. No man can serve God and mammon. No man can serve God and money. And you see, beloved, God has delivered us out of greed from this world. Point number two. It is the, your power for the present. Christ dying on the cross proved to you and I that he's empowering us and he's giving us the power for the present. You know, the present is right now. What you're living in right now. Let me tell you this. Irrespective of what you're going through, Jesus already knows. He is the author and the finisher of life. Amen. He knows. And the Bible tells us that he has planned a way of escape for you. Amen. Amen. If anybody is coming against you right now, Jesus has provided a way of escape for you already. Amen. If there's any temptation that's coming across your path, Jesus has provided a way out for you already. How? He has given you power to overcome and he has given you power to be delivered. You see, because Jesus is alive, we now have received the power of his Holy Spirit to live a life of victory. Amen? Amen. You and I can never ever live in defeat. We will never live in defeat a single day because Jesus has given us the victory. And you know what a great God we serve. An amazing God Amen. that always wants to do great stuff for you. You know, just this week I had to take my car in because it was due for a service. So finally I called the guy and he says, hey listen, you can bring it in, it's going to cost you $175. And I'm like, $175, don't you do any specials? And he's like, oh, okay, we'll do a special for you, we'll do it for $75. I said, great, there that's an go. awesome deal. And you know, I take my car in there, I go in and I have it serviced, and he says, listen, uh, my GPS wasn't working. So I look, at, I look at the guy, the service advisor, and I said, can you have a look at my GPS for me? and probably get it working. And he says, well, we'll take a look at it. He comes back later and he tells me it's $214 just uh, for a DVD that they put into the car to reset my GPS. And I'm like, oh, okay, $214, what do I do? He said, the job is done. I said, but don't you always consult with the client? And he's like, well, you wanted it done, we got it done. And you know, that's how Jesus is at times. He doesn't have to consult with you on everything. Yeah. Because he has given you the victory already. Amen. You panicking, you worrying, and you in anxiety when what he has done has already been paid for. Amen. You know, so I make a payment for this job and I come home. I just open the front door. I walk in and not even my first step into the door, my phone rings. And I look at my phone and it says, Todd. And I'm like, oh, Todd, I know Todd from Hawaii, but I know he's now in Chicago. I wonder why he's calling. So I answer the phone, and I hear the phone, and the guy on the opposite side, is, side says, Hi, Pastor Raj, this is Todd. And he said, I'm the regional manager of Acura uh, in California. And I said, oh, great to hear you. And he says, tell me, uh, did you get your GPS fixed? I said, yes, I did. The guy's actually put in a disc, and he says, did you pay for the job? I said, yes, I did. He says, no, you are not paying a dime for that job. He says, I want you to know that I'm taking care of that bill. He said, please make a copy of that bill and send it to me. And you know, this is how Jesus is. Amen. He died on the cross to tell you that all your bills have been paid in the And you know, this is favor, church. This is what I'm telling you about. When you live according to the word of God, when you live according to the principles that God has set out in his word, he gives you power for the present. Yeah. Amen. Amen. My final point this morning is, it is your hope for the future. Amen. You know, Jesus dying on the cross and resurrecting him from the dead, coming out of the tomb, 
showing himself to so many people. He's showing himself to you and I because he is the hope of our future. Amen. And you see, what does that tell us? Because Jesus lives, you and I can live as well. Because Jesus lives, you and I can live a victorious life. You know, when we look at the power of his resurrection, I mean, think about it. All those nails on the cross could not keep him. All those beatings could not kill him. The Bible tells us, in the end, the last words of Jesus on the cross, before saying, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. He went on to say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Right? And you know, the Bible tells us in the book of Corinthians, had Satan known that he had crucified the Lord of glory, he would not have done it. Had Satan known that he ordered the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, he would not have done it. And you know, beloved, as we continue to live this life, let us know that Jesus resurrected from the dead. The resurrection for you and I meets all our need. It is our deliverance. It is our power for the present. And it is our hope for the future. You know, as Jesus hung and died on the cross, you know, one of the hymns that Jesus was singing was Psalms 22. And you know, as the people looked on the cross and they began to look at Jesus, and you know, Jesus began to sing Psalms 22. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? If Jesus is God on the cross, how can God forsake God? <coughs> that was a psalm that the Jews were singing during the time of oppression by the Roman government. And the Jews were crying out for a deliverer. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? When the Jews, the Bible tells us, had heard the suffering Messiah singing on the cross, Jesus wasn't crying. Who can sing on the cross? Only the Messiah can Amen. sing on the cross. Amen. And as he began singing that psalm, the Bible tells us a great division had come amongst the Jews. Amen. Half of them believed and half of them did not. Beloved, let's not become like the Jews today. In spite of all Jesus had done for us on the cross, the resurrection power from the tomb, you and I, let us not give up on Jesus Christ. Why? He is not dead. He is risen. Amen? You believe that this morning? And with that in mind, I want you to take a look at this video.
Please take him and tell me where he is. Amazing. Jesus is not here. He is risen. As Zahara, she wants to close out with a memory verse that she had learned and she said, I want to share this scripture with everyone this morning. Come, Zahara. scripture in mind, we want to seal out this Resurrection Sunday right. with communion this morning. You know, we serve a miracle working God. God is so good. And you know, thank you all you online viewers for watching with us. We wish you a happy Resurrection Sunday. And we soon hope to be fellowshipping with you one day soon. Amen. God bless you. This morning as we partake of the communion, let's partake Amen. with that Resurrection power in mind. That God has empowered us. All your sickness, all your diseases, He has taken upon Himself. You don't have to be ill. You don't have to be unwell. You don't have to be in lack. Your body doesn't have to be broken. Because yes. His body was broken for you Amen. and me. Amen. So this morning as we partake, let's come into the full acknowledgement of what Amen. had taken place on the cross. Looking at the empty tomb and remembering Luke 24 verse 6. Yes. He is not here. He is risen. Amen. Amen. So a body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ which was broken for you and for me. Take heed in remembrance of him. Thank you. In like manner after supper, he took the cup and he lifted it up and he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Father, we thank you for shedding that blood just for us, O oh God. That precious blood that bought us, that washed us, that cleansed us and that delivered us, O oh God. Father, we give you praise as we partake this morning. We thank you. We do it in remembrance of you, the blood of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, which was shed for you and for me, take drink in remembrance of him. Father, we thank you this morning that even as we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, we thank you for all the families throughout this entire universe. God, a day in history, whereby you split time, O oh God, and where you came to save mankind. I thank you for that blood. I thank you for that body which was broken for us. The blood that was shed that is continuing to deliver and to save. Thank you for the story of the cross that never grow old. Thank you for the power of your resurrection. And Father, we too, like Paul, we say this morning that I might know him. The fellowship of his suffering and the power of his resurrection. Manifest yourself to us daily, God, and cause us to live for Jesus and Jesus alone. Now may the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with each and every one of us here in this place and together with all God's children throughout this entire universe, this day and forevermore. And the saints of God said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Over to our worship team.
end with resurrection power. So if you can all join us and stand for a moment. Clap your hands.
there from Venezuela, yes, was studying um, English and we're so sad you're going back home after six weeks, but we know God has a plan and purpose over your life, according to Jeremiah 29, 11.